Camille Labchuk is the future. Still in her early 30s, she's been an environmental and animal rights activist for more than 20 years, beginning when she was nine and saw television images of the seal hunt off her native Prince Edward Island. After a stint as a Green Party staffer, she went to law school to become an animal rights lawyer, which she did. In 2014, she established the first animal rights law practice in Canada. She's now the executive director of Animal Justice, a not-for-profit legislative fund dedicated to advocating for the humane treatment of animals. We're going to hear a lot more about animal rights in the future. And we're going to hear a lot more about Camille Labchuk. Tell me about Animal Justice. This is an organization that you've been with for quite a long time, and now your role has changed. But tell me about the organization itself. What is it? What does it do? How does it... Well, its life. it's exciting. We're Canada's only animal law organization. So there are environmental law organizations in Canada, civil liberties organizations that do legal work. But for a long time, there was no animal law group. Uh, and a group of lawyers saw that in 2008, 2009. And animal justice was actually formed by, by some people who wanted to fill that void and make sure that um, animals, for reasons I'm sure we'll get into, actually have their legal interests represented, that the laws protecting them are actually enforced, and that we start to make progress in the same way that environmentalists and human rights organizations have done with the law. I think a lot of people would be surprised to, to, to realize that there was that much legal work to be done in this field. <laughs> There's an enormous amount. So the field of animal law, it's still very new to Canada. And the idea, of course, is that we go to court uh, to enforce the laws to protect animals, that we bring lawsuits targeting animal abusers, that we uh, help get better laws passed through the legislatures and through Parliament. Uh, but for a long time that was happening in um, you know, less of a concerted manner. And Canada was actually quite far behind compared to countries like the United States in this field. They've had lawyers down there working on animal cases for over 30 years. So we have a lot of catching up to do and I think we're starting to make progress toward that end. Leave me through. Leave me through a day or or a week in your in your work schedule. What what uh, what would you be doing hour by hour, day by day? Well, we really focus on a few key things. So um, you know, one issue is litigating cases. If, if there's a reason to go to court to protect protect animals, we'll try to do so. Um, another, of course, is passing new laws that protect animals. Right right now, the state of of regulations protecting animals and and laws in general they're fairly scarce. Uh, and in a lot of situations, there's opportunities to, to get parliaments and legislatures to, to pass new laws, or even city councils and municipalities to pass bylaws. And then of course, uh, one big chunk of the puzzle is enforcing the laws that are actually on the books. So sometimes animals actually do have legal protections, but law enforcement agencies aren't aware of uh, situations where they're in violation or um, in some cases, unfortunately, aren't interested in doing their jobs. So we work on those areas. And you know, my week could be, uh, could be very diverse. So as the executive director, I manage most aspects of the organization, whether that be Facebook posting, social media, communicating with members via newsletters, but also, of course, taking on campaigns. Uh, so my week last week, for an example, <laughs> the, uh, on Friday morning I received an email from a supporter who became aware that there was a lion cub inside a Toronto nightclub the afternoon before. So essentially a nightclub named Lavelle had opened a new rooftop pool bar. And there were all of these photos geotagged with the name of the Lavelle nightclub posted on Instagram showing people holding this lion cub. Now, it's completely illegal to have a lion cub in Toronto because the city rightfully banned keeping exotic animals. And they do that, of course, because it's uh, you know, incredibly unsafe for people to be exposed to exotic animals like lions that are wild, not tame, not domesticated creatures. And of course, more importantly, it's, it's inappropriate, obviously, to keep animals, exotic animals like that in captivity. And so uh, Toronto has a ban on keeping those animals. So we contacted law enforcement right away and Toronto Animal Services started investigating. Um, so one thing that we also want to do and ensure happens is expose these cases to the media so that people are aware of the issues. People know that if they see a lion in a nightclub, they can speak up. <laughs> Camille Labchuk of Animal Justice, who established Canada's first animal rights law firm. 
The Green Interview has paid a lot of attention to advocates for expanding the human right to clean air and water. That's the subject of our recent film, Green Rights, also posted on this site. The further extension of those rights to the natural world and the animals is the logical next step, both in morals and in law. The experts on this subject include Cormac Cullinan of South Africa, author of Wild Law, and John Boros, an Anishinaabe law professor deeply versed in Canada's common law system and also in the very different legal traditions of our Aboriginal brothers and sisters. Those two green interviews have stimulated a lot of fresh thinking about what the law is and what it could be. Take a look. For The Green Interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron.